Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain. Day 40 of the lockdown. That's right, day 40. It seems to be never ending. And if you had asked me 40 days ago if I would still be sitting here doing these videos, I probably would have said no. But the fact of the matter is, here we are. Now, firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video, around 800 comments on the last video. And again, a big thanks to all of the people that decided to support the channel through a small donation. You can see your names here. And don't forget, there is a link below in the description if you want to help support the channel. Now, let's have a look at some of the stories that caught my attention over the last couple of days. And the first one is that the Prime Minister Sanchez yesterday went in front of Congress to ask for an extension to the state of alarm, and it was approved until May the 9th. So the official state of alarm in place until May the 9th. However, things are starting to get a little bit tenser from a political point of view. And we can see here that yesterday that the government strained dialogue and blamed the PP, the opposition party, for cuts to the health system and called people who have been criticizing the minimum income policy unpatriotic. So things starting to get a little bit tense from a political point of view. Now, the Prime Minister also said yesterday that he anticipates a slow and gradual de-escalation for the second half of May. So from May the 15th, we could possibly have some deconfinement measures here in Spain. But again, this is not official yet. And he also said that he places the new normal at the end of May. Now again, what exactly this new normal is going to be, nobody really knows. Probably, as I said a few videos ago, that it's going to mean permanent social distancing, the permanent wearing of masks, and possibly limits to how many people can enter shopping areas. But again, if you've got any ideas on what the new normal is going to look like, leave them in that comment section below. Now, the health ministry also came out and said that the alarm state will have to be prolonged for the long months that the deconfinement phase lasts. So for however long this deconfinement process lasts, we're going to have this state of alarm state here in Spain, according to the Ministry of Health. But again, nothing official there yet. Now, on Tuesday, the government was severely criticized for the way that it handled the deconfinement rules for children that it was going to put in place. Everybody was expecting that children were going to be allowed to go for walks with their parents to be able to exercise for up to 30 minutes a day. Tuesday afternoon, the government announced that was not the case and that children would only be allowed to accompany parents to supermarkets, pharmacies or the bank, things that basically they could already do if there was no one else to look after the kids at home. But the population here went crazy when the government announced this and by nine o'clock they changed their decision and decided that children would in fact be able to go out and practice some type of exercise. As yet, we don't really know what that exercise is because it hasn't been made clear. So we're waiting to be told exactly what children can do. But the latest news says that up to three children under the age of 14 will be able to go out with a parent for only an hour and to jump, walk and run. So children will be able to get some fresh air. And it's good to see the government was able to rectify and use common sense in this measure. Because as we can see here, that taking a walk does provide psychological relief for children. And several child psychologists point out that children going to the store or to the pharmacy would not have brought benefit to their mental health. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to say. What about adults' mental health? And it is a serious question that should be on the table at the moment. When are people going to be able to practice some type of exercise? Now, as we saw here after May 15th, the Prime Minister is planning some type of relaxation to the current rules in place. And hopefully after that date, people will be able to go out and do some type of exercise. But again, nothing official yet. Now, another piece of news that caught my attention is that genetic analysis suggests that the virus was already circulating in Spain in mid-February. Now, obviously, it's easy to look back and say what was done and what wasn't done, what should have been done. Remember, hindsight is 2020, as they say. But obviously, if this virus was circulating in Spain, then a lot of the big events that took place, the football games, the demonstrations, etc., should have been stopped and we wouldn't be in the situation that we are. But as I said, hindsight 2020. And another headline here that caught my attention is that authorities foresee that 70% of the population will be infected. Now, I remember back in March, the Germans were saying that perhaps 70 or 80% of the population will be infected. So it hasn't been until the last couple of days that Spanish authorities are admitting that 70% of the population will be infected by this virus. So a little bit slow to get that message across, in my opinion. Now, another piece of news here regarding that new normal that I spoke before, and it says that screens between tables and sanitary welcome kits 
how Spain's tourism industry is preparing for life after the lockdown. Now, I mentioned in various videos just how important the tourist sector here is in Spain. In fact, the whole hospitality industry, the restaurants, the bars, the nightclubs, all of those industries are very, very important. And of course, people in these sectors want business up and running as soon as possible. So as we can see, if we are allowed to go back into restaurants, coffee shops and bars in the next couple of months, there's going to be a lot of changes to what we previously knew. And as we can see here, screens between tables so that there's no direct contact between customers is one of those ideas that is being put forward. Now, I had an email this morning from Alex in the Canary Islands regarding the situation there. And it read, I hope this email finds you and the family well. We had some good news in the Canaries this morning. Lockdown is being relaxed as of the 27th. Now, I read this email with surprise because I personally hadn't seen anything related to this in the local press here. There's nothing in El País, there's nothing in El Mundo about the Canary Islands relaxing the confinement on the 27th. So I went to the article that Alex linked in the email and I read that Serra sees conditions to start deconfining in the Canary Islands from Monday 27th. And I went on to say that Luis Serra, the spokesman for the scientific committee that advises the Canary Islands government on the pandemic, believes that conditions are in place to propose that the islands begin deconfinement as of April 27th both for people to take to the streets and to recover some economic activity. So I went back to Alex's email just to check what he said again, and he said lockdown is being relaxed as of the 27th. Now what I read here, Alex, and other people in the Canary Islands is that the Canary Islands are suggesting that this is the case, that they can start to relax the confinement rules as of the 27th. But I don't get the impression that things will be relaxed from the 27th. It's just what they are proposing. And we can see here that the Canary Islands aspire to start the lack of confinement from April 27th because this scientific committee believes that the conditions exist. However, if you look at what Pedro Sanchez, the Prime Minister, said yesterday, he said that he assures that he will be empathetic with the Canary Islands, and he has tried to send a message of calm and commitment that he will act against the economic crisis that is looming in the islands. Now, I'm going to be honest here and say that I would love to see people in the Canary Islands be able to start going back to their normal way of life, but I'm not really optimistic that it's going to happen on April 27th from what I'm reading. Now, I understand the Canary Islands are pushing really hard to try to get some type of change happening there quicker than in other parts of Spain. But with the state of alarm being extended yesterday to the 9th and the Prime Minister announcing some relaxation as of the 15th of May, I don't think it's going to happen on the 27th. But again, you never know what can happen in Spain. Now let's have a look at some of the comments on the last video. The first one is from David Keith. He says, Hi Stuart, I love your show and never miss your fantastic content. I live in Lanzarote in an apartment complex that has beautiful grounds and a swimming pool. My wife, who has diabetes and enjoys walking around the grounds in the early evening, was reported by sneaky neighbours and the guay Civil was called. She managed to miss them, but what rights do the police have in arresting you for walking around your own private grounds? She maintains social distancing and wears a mask, and yet the police come into private grounds to find her. I understand if she was exercising outside her apartment, she would be breaking the law, but surely she can walk around the grounds of her own home. Now, obviously, David, I don't know the exact circumstances of where you live, but I suppose that you live in one of these typical complexes that has a communal area, and there's probably 10, 15, 20 apartments that are able to share that communal area. Now, those communal areas officially are not accessible by the public. In fact, a lot of the buildings in my area, those areas have been cordoned off. There's tape up and people are not allowed to access those areas. People are only allowed to go directly from their apartments to the street if they need to go to a shop, or to the chemist or to the bank. They're not allowed to practice any type of activity in those common areas. Now, with regard to people reporting you to the Guadalupe Fibil, now, unfortunately, that is happening because a lot of people feel that if they can't do it, why should your wife be doing it? Now, I personally here would suggest, David, that you talk to your neighbors, you explain your situation, and you tell them that your wife has a health condition and that she needs to do some type of exercise outdoors, and hopefully people will be sympathetic to that and they uh, won't report you to the police. But that's the only thing that I can suggest, because as I said, you're not allowed to use these common areas if that is the case. In my personal situation, it's a bit different because I have a private garden, it's not a shared area, so I can go outside and practice and nobody can report me for doing that. But if it is an apartment with one of these common areas, then technically she's not allowed to walk outside. Now the next one here is from Max. He says, hey Stuart, hope you're good. Me and my family moved back to the Costa del Sol in August last year. 
Sad that this all happened in our first year back, but hey, used your previous vids for advice when moving. The lockdown is pretty brutal. Our two kids, four and two, have been in our apartment for nearly six weeks, so looking forward to the 27th. I really hope this is over soon and we can return to some type of normality. Yeah, Max, glad to see that you moved to Spain, but sorry to hear that you're in this situation at the moment. Obviously, this was something that couldn't be foreseen, and a lot of people that moved to Spain in the last few years are probably questioning whether they made the correct decision or not, but remember that it's not going to last forever, Max, and we we will soon be able to go for walks along the uh, Paseo Maritimos. We will be able to go back one day and have a drink at a chiringuito and watch the sun come down. But uh, And hopefully after May 15th, we can start to go back and do some of these things that we love doing so much here in Spain. Now, another one here from Bernard. He says, hi, Stuart, great info. I flew into Spain from Panama on the 13th and have been in lockdown since then, like everyone else in the country. I'm stuck in a resort paying 854 euros a month as extensions keep on repeating and they don't want to lower their price. Would you know what my rights are as I am slowly running out of cash and cannot keep on paying those tourist prices? Regards, Bernie. Now, unfortunately, Bernie, I don't know what your rights are in this situation. I imagine it is a bit of an inconvenience being stuck in a place where you have to pay that type of money. But then again, 854 euros a month doesn't seem that expensive compared to some of the prices that you would pay in Madrid or Barcelona to rent to flat. Now I'm going to open this up to the viewers. If you're on the Costa del Sol and you can help Bernard out by offering him a cheaper type of accommodation, please let him know in the comment section below or leave a comment there and I'll try to connect you up with Bernard in order to help him out because nobody wants to be stuck in a place where they feel that they're paying too much money. So if you can help him out, leave it in the comment section below. Now another comment here from Stephen. He says, Stuart, I speak with people online with so many conflicting views regarding what you can or can't do at the moment. Unfortunately, many are sourced from Facebook forums. My question is, are you aware of sites where bullet point directives from the government can be found? I live in the Valencia region. Regards. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky at the moment, Stephen, because there is a lot of conflicting information. Even the messages coming from the government are a little bit contradictory at the moment. You can go to the main government websites, for example, the Interior Ministry or the Ministry of Health. They have a lot of PDF documents that you can read. They're in Spanish, so you might have to translate them. But there are some good programs online where you can just copy that text and put it in and get a rough idea of what they're talking about. And those are the official rules that you should be following at the moment regarding what you can and can't do in Spain at the moment. So check those sites out, the Ministry of Health and the Interior Ministry. Now, another one here from Kiko Mint Pepper. How will Brexit be affected? I'm a Brit living in Spain. Now, to be honest, I don't know what the situation with Brexit is at the moment and how it's going to affect Brits living in Spain. However, we have thousands of people watching these videos who are in the same situation as you. So again, please leave comments in the section below as to what's happening with Brexit and how it is going to affect British people living in Spain at the moment. So in the section below. Sugar says, hi, Stuart. In the last video, you highlighted people who are planning to come to Spain for work should forget about it. May I know more information behind this statement? Yeah, basically, Sugar, what I mean by that is that if you're not working in one of the dynamic sectors at the moment, for example, IT or one of the other in fashion sectors at the moment, jobs in Spain are pretty bad and conditions are pretty bad. I always say don't depend on the local economy here. The job market is pretty bad. For a lot of jobs, salaries are quite low. However, if you're able to live in Spain and have your incomes coming from outside of Spain, Spain is a fantastic country to live in, which offers a good quality of life. But if you depend on the local economy and the local job market, it can be a little bit frustrating for a lot of people. So that's one of the reasons why I don't recommend it for most. But there are exceptions to the rule. So if you are working in Spain and you have good conditions, you work for a fantastic company, let us know what you do and how people can get a good job in Spain. Finally, one here from Christopher. He says, Colombia, fifth week of lockdown, which has now been extended until the 11th of May. Colombia's lockdown is harsher than Spain, at least in Medellin and Bogota. For example, in Medellin, we can only go shopping certain days of the week, corresponding last digit of ID passport number only once or twice per week. In Bogota, it is odd number days for men and even number days for women. Similarly, we cannot go out for exercise. So there we go, Colombia is stricter than Spain, at least in the two big cities there. And I'm sure that there are other places in the world that are stricter than Spain, but I haven't heard of too many. So if you are in a place that is stricter than Spain, again, leave it in the comment section below. Now on that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. I'll let you guys debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego and stay safe.